In the 4th century, ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle embarked on the first critical study of colour. Aristotle's approach to colour was, as you would expect, philosophic in nature. Pairing colour with what was considered at the time the four main scientific elements, earth, fire, air and water. Aristotle believed blue and yellow to be the only true primary colours. He developed a linear colour system based on the way light changes throughout the day from dawn to dusk. Nearly 2,000 years later, Italian artist Leon Battista Alberti continued where Aristotle left off. Battista kept Aristotle's idea of pairing colour to alchemical elements, differing slightly in his choice of colour. In his book On Painting, he discussed how he viewed colours as living entities and would refer to primary colours as separate species and shades or hues as the genus of that species. He was obviously brilliant, but a bit mental. <laughs> in 1490, the eccentric visionary artist Leonardo da Vinci developed what he coined chiaroscuro, the practice of using light to create 3D images on a 2D surface. Da Vinci identified five basic tonal values, highlight, direct light, reflected light, shadow, and cast shadow. Using these principles, he was able to create striking images, utilising stark contrast to give a strong sense of directional lighting. Though he was better known for his use of light, da Vinci also developed a simple six-colour palette, this was used to paint masterpieces such as the iconic Mona Lisa. And they x-rayed the, the painting and there's different earlier versions underneath it. The first version of the Mona Lisa was much more... <laughs> Happy Lisa! Although Isaac Newton is now well known for his work in the field of mathematics, he also turned his gargantuan noggin to colour theory. In 1672, Newton published his now classic work, Optics. Newton was able to demonstrate that white light, when shone through a prism, separates into the full spectrum of colour. He also created the very first colour wheel by simply joining either end of the spectrum, thus forming a circle. In 1810, the lawyer, author, natural scientist and artist Johann Wolfgang von Goethe published his Theory of Colours widely regarded as one of the most important books on colour ever written. Goethe detested Newton's clinical approach to the subject and set out to show how colour is shaped by our own perception. To illustrate just how much Goethe loathed Newton's findings, I'll read a short passage from his book. We compare the Newtonian theory of colours to an old castle, which was at first constructed by its architect with youthful precipitation. All damages, whether inflicted by the hand of the enemy or the power of time, were quickly made good. As occasion required, we deepened the moats, raised the walls, and took care there should be no lack of towers, battlements, and embrasures. The old castle was chiefly held in honour because it had never been taken, because it had repulsed so many assaults, had baffled so many hostile operations, and had always preserved its virgin renown. The building itself is already abandoned, its only inmates are a few invalids, who in simple seriousness imagine that they are prepared for war. We find this eighth wonder of the world already nodding to its fall as a deserted piece of antiquity and begin at once, without further ceremony, to dismantle it from gable and roof downwards, that the sun may at last shine into the old nests of rats and owls. So needless to say, he was not a fan. Gotha was fascinated by the psychological aspects of colour and the way in which they can affect our mood. He went to great extremes to demonstrate how things such as distance, light and shadow can vastly alter how we perceive an object. Gotha also changed Newton's asymmetrical seven colour wheel by reducing it to six, making it symmetrical. He went on to show how opposing colours on the wheel interact with each other giving us the modern-day concept of complementary colours. 
It's this study on the interplay of colours which started a whole new trend in art, inspiring a contrasting group of artists as diverse as William Turner and Vasily Kandinsky. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to colour theory. In part two, I'm going to go over more technical aspects such as complementary colours, split complementary, tetrads, triads, harmonies, things like that. So as always, like, share, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. <coughs> Fuck. <coughs> In 1910, oh, fuck off. <laughs> Shit. Ah! <coughs> what the fuck does that say? Na natural, natural scientist. Yeah. <laughs> Goethe detested Newton's clinical approach to the subject and set out to fuck. <laughs> set out to fuck. Ah. Uh, Goethe. Goethe. Fuck me. Goethe. Gotha detested Clint. Me, sure. Me, Warren. Sha, sha, han, hao. Why am I speaking Chinese? Okay, uh. <laughs>